film. So I figure maybe about an hour, maybe less. I don't know, but we'll see. So the first thing I want to go over is just actually just sitting and standing. So this may sound like, oh my God, she's going to go over just sitting in a chair and standing up. But believe me, this is one of the most basic moves, obviously, that we do every day. But as we get older, we're kind of creaking up, uh, you know, like that. So it's nice to get it down. Good for practicing for a squat eventually, but getting your form down first is, is the most important thing to do before you start doing squats or, or push-ups or anything like that. So we're gonna get the basic moves down, okay? So as far as sitting and standing, um, can you go around the other way? Take me from the side. So if you have a chair or if you happen to be outside, um, you can sit on a bench, you can sit on a rock, whatever is there for you. I just happen to be inside, so I'm going to sit on my chair. So all you're doing is just sitting and standing. And as you come up, you're going to think about squeezing your butt or your glutes, okay? Your glute is actually the biggest muscle in your whole body, and we'll go over why it's really important to strengthen the glute muscle because in the end, in the end, it helps to ward off, well, I'm gonna pick back pain as one of the biggest things it helps to ward off. Um, it's one of the things that most of my clients get relief from when we practice really emphasizing working the glutes, okay? So we're gonna sit, and you're just gonna stand. And when you stand, you're gonna squeeze your glutes. Okay, you're not hyperextending in the back, not bringing the lower back in real high, hard or anything like that. You're gonna just squeeze your glutes. So you're gonna sit and you're gonna stand. You're gonna sit and you're gonna stand. Okay, now I'm not doing this where my knees are going over my toes. Okay, my knees are behind my toes, my feet are about hip distance apart, and when I'm sitting and standing, I'm gonna look sort of ahead and find a focal point in front of me. Okay, so I'm sitting and I'm standing and I'm squeezing. Sit and stand. Now it might be a lot to remember, but if you've ever trained with me, you know that I repeat things a lot of times. I want you to think about mind-body connection. I want you to think about this why I don't really play music when I work out with people. I want them to really think about their breathing and the body part we're focusing on. So you cannot isolate a body part, but you can target it. So we are targeting the legs and the glute right now, but actually the whole core too, because I want you to think about bringing the belly in towards the spine, but not holding your breath. So you don't want the belly sticking out like this. You want to bring the belly in, and I don't care what's out here. You want to strengthen the muscle underneath. So there is a muscle that's underneath anything you might have on your belly. So I want you to think about bringing that, the belly in, but I also want you to think about breathing, okay? So we're gonna sit, and we're gonna stand, squeeze. Sit, and stand, squeeze. Sit and stand, squeeze. So we're gonna do 10 more of these. 10, and squeeze, and nine, and squeeze, and eight, and squeeze. Now I'm not bending over, standing up pretty straight. And seven, and six, squeeze, and five, and four, and breathing, three, you don't want to hold your breath, and two, belly in, and one, and squeeze. Now your hands can be here and wherever you feel comfortable. If you go lower, it's going to be a little bit more intense. Now remember, this is the beginner workout, okay? So if you go lower, if you add weights or do anything, of course, it's going to be a little harder, but I just want to go over the basics with you guys, okay? 
So the next exercise I want to do, we did a little bit of legs, always work in your core. We're actually not going to do a ab workout per se today, but every exercise you do, you should be thinking about your core, bringing your belly in, strengthening the muscle in your core, your whole core, and um, you're always working the core. Okay, so the next exercise we're going to do, and it's very underestimated, but it is a great exercise for the whole posterior chain and actually for the whole core also. It's called bird dog or opposite arm and leg. So if you have a mat, we're going to get down on the mat and we're going to start on all fours. So a couple of pointers if you bring that over to the side so they can see. Okay. So my belly is in. Now if you do this right, I still practice this and I've been working out since I'm 16 and I'm 55. So I still practice this. I may have weights or ankle weights or bands or whatever, but this is one of the best exercises to do for the whole, actually the whole body. So put that mind body connection together. Make sure you're breathing. A lot of points to this exercise. So you're going to lift an arm and a leg on opposite sides, so it's opposite arm and leg. I'm bringing my belly in. Again, I don't care what's hanging down here. It doesn't matter. We're going to strengthen the muscle underneath. You're going to bring that belly in. I don't want any dipping in the lower back. You want a nice neutral spine, so it's nice and flat. Belly in. And I'm going to bring my right arm up and my left leg back. So my head is not hyperextended. I want to have my head in line with my arm. And I want to imagine that somebody's pulling my arm and somebody else is pulling my leg. So you want it pretty straight. And you also don't want to be leaning over to the side if you can help it. So it's pretty intense if you sit and you really do the exercise right and you're breathing, your belly is in, and then you bring it down. And then we go to the opposite side, left arm up, right leg back. I'm, I'm extending that right leg and I'm extending that left arm and I'm imagining somebody pulling me in opposite directions. My head is in line with my arm. I'm breathing. My belly is in. My hips are not tilting over to the side. So it's a lot of balance too. And down. So I'm going to take a little bit of a child's pose here. Rest in between. And we're just going to do five on each side. Okay, it's a little warm up here. So up on all fours, extend, and down. On the same side, two, and down. Extend, and down. Extend, and down. And five. And down. So you may want to take a little break, do a little child pose. You bring your big toes together, separate your legs. I do this a lot. Rest in between. Breathe. Stretching out the hips, and we're going to go to the other side. I'm going to go over those pointers again. So your knees are about hip distance apart. Your hands are pretty much underneath your shoulder, about the same distance as your knees. So you have that balance going. Belly in. I'm putting that mind-body connection. I want to keep my belly in and I want to breathe. I don't want to hold my breath. I'm going to extend my left arm, my right leg. Somebody's pulling my leg and somebody else is pulling my hand. So I want to extend those fingers and bring it in. Extend and bring it in. And three and bring it in. I'm not doing this. Doing this. Carrie says hi, Aunt Lenora. And down. What? Carrie says hi, Aunt Lenora. Hi, there. And five, extend. Okay, let's take a child's pose. So we warmed up. We did our sit and stand, and we did our opposite arm and leg. So again, mind body connection, lots to think about. You got to think about your breathing, bringing your belly in. Again, I don't care what's hanging out outside the muscle. Squeeze that belly in, okay? And I don't know who's here, but for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lenora. I have a little business called It's a New Dawn, and um, 
I'm 55, I have five kids and two grandchildren. And health and wellness is my passion. So I hope this helps you out a little bit. Um, our third exercise, so we did that whole posterior chain plus your, your core. And like I said, you're always working your core. So no matter what you're doing, think about bringing that belly in but not holding your breath. Okay, so we're gonna do a push-up off the wall. So you gotta get the basics down before you try a push-up. Because I've seen too many people try to get down on the ground, which you got gravity just pushing you down, right? And even if you're on your knees and you're doing this and your lower back is in and you're like trying to get up, what is that going to accomplish? You are just gonna hurt your lower back. So I always start everybody up on the wall. So we're upright. So as you get stronger, you start getting lower and lower for the push-up, okay? So if you have a wall, if you happen to be outside and you have a thick tree that you can put your hands against, that would be great. Um, hun, can you go over on this side? They can see me. Again, I have things set up for, for yoga, so I, I apologize. And Kavita, look what I have here. I love it. Okay, so you're gonna get into a straight, think about being in a straight line, away from the wall, on your tippy toes, or your tree, or whatever you're putting your hands against. And um, again, look at my lower back. I don't want this. Okay, I want you can squeeze your butt. We have a nice neutral spine. I want to talk about posterior and anterior tilt. So we got, this is an anterior tilt. We got that dip in the lower back. This is a posterior tilt where you're bringing the pelvis up towards your ribs. A lot of the exercise I'll say, do a posterior pelvic tilt. When you're bringing that pelvic area up towards your ribs, so we get rid of that little dip in the lower back here. So this is anterior, posterior. So we're doing that against the wall here. Squeeze my butt, nice straight line. I'm sort of like in a plank here. And I'm just gonna imagine pushing myself up off this wall, okay? My hands are about right where my chest is, about a little wider than my chest. Again, my belly is in. And I'm going to just bring my body towards the wall. But when you bring your body in, I want you to think about working the back too. So you see how my elbows are going back towards the back wall? Come back to my back, hun. My back. See, I'm working my back also when I'm pushing my body in. And then I'm going to bring my body out. Working chest. So in and out. So as you're doing this, mind-body connection. Don't start dipping down in the lower back and losing the strength in the whole core of your body. Keep everything nice and strong. So bring your body in on your tippy toes, in and out. So your nose may brush against the wall, but you don't wanna just hang out there. Right now, we're not doing that. So bring it in and push your body away. Bring it in and push your body away. In, push your body away. Again, I want you to think about your breath. In, just don't hold it. In, belly in, okay? So that, we did our posterior chain, we did our legs, we did the, our front body. We're actually gonna do two things for the back, although that opposite arm and leg was for the whole posterior chain. Because most of us are sitting every day now, most, you know, we're doing it more, we're over our computers or our phones or whatever we're doing, we're in this position. The fascia or the connective tissue gets bound that way. You get locked in that position. And anybody who's getting older, we know, we don't want to have this hunch in our back. So I have my jacket off because I really want to show you the muscle that's working. If you could grab a towel, a towel, a, a strap or anything where you can pull tight or taut, 
bringing up, bring it, bring it up above your head, and we're going to improvise a lat pull down. So what we're doing here is we're targeting, not isolating, targeting the back here. We're counteracting the effects of sitting and hunching over all day. Okay? So we're going to bring our arms up and we're going to pull down. Pull the strap or the towel and squeeze. Bring it up and down and squeeze and up and down. And squeeze. Okay? We're going to do these again. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do a whole circuit of these exercises. I'm going to show you the exercises. That's working my back. It feels really good because you open up in your heart. You don't need any equipment. You can actually, you don't even need a towel or anything. You can actually just put that mind body connection together and know that you're working your back. And as you pull down, pull and squeeze. One and two and up. One and two. Okay? That's a, a row or a um, flat pull down without a machine. Okay? Last exercise we're going to do is for the glutes. And remember I told you, if you haven't trained with me, you know I'm like obsessed with the glutes, but if, if you are a a human, <laughs> I hope you all are, it will benefit you forever in long term uh, as you get older. If you like to walk, if you like to sit, if you like to play with your children or your grandchildren or whatever, making your glutes strong, not just for aesthetic reasons, is so very important. And again, I'm going to emphasize, if you ever have knee problems, hip problems, lower back problems, this is going to help a lot. So of course there's a lot of things to do with the glutes, but I'm doing very basic exercises today. So what we're doing now is called the glute bridge. So we're going to get down and I want you to bring your feet about hip distance apart, although everybody is different in how they feel the emphasis in the glutes. And again, we're not isolating, we're targeting the glutes, but you may feel it in your hamstring a little bit, which is the back of your leg. You may even feel it in your quad a little bit, which is the front of the leg, um, but our emphasis is on the glute. And what I want you to do, bring your, we'll start out this way, and then you move to wherever it feels good for you. We'll separate our feet about hip distance apart. Bring your feet Actually, bring your feet out, the toes, a little bit, not a lot, and bring your feet in pretty close to your butt, okay? And your hands are down, and I want you to just push through your feet, and you can be emphasizing in the heel, but, you know, think about pushing through the whole foot. So push and bring your whole middle of your body, your glutes, up, and then I want you to take your hands, and I want you to feel your butt. I want you to feel it. Now you may say, oh, I don't really feel it in my glutes. Um, but you know what? If you kind of push in there, I mean, if you have something going on, like some fat on your butt, it doesn't matter. Push your finger in there and you'll probably feel that muscle in there working a little bit. Okay. And that's all I want right now. If you're a beginner, you may not be able to put that mind body connection together, but put that mind body connection emphasis on the butt. Bring it down, push up, squeeze. Squeeze your glutes. Down, bring it up, and squeeze. Now again, you may want to play around with your feet. You may want to bring them out a little bit and come up and say, oh, okay, now I feel like my feet are away from my butt a little more. Or you can try bringing your feet in a little bit more and try it again. Oh, okay, that's good. I can feel it now, even a little bit, okay? Everybody's different, our bone structure is different, or shape different, so you do what feels good for you. See if you feel it a little bit. Maybe tomorrow you might say, okay, I really did feel it in my glutes because I feel it today, okay? All right, so those are 
the exercises that we're going to do, and we're going to do two rounds today. We're going to do two rounds of these exercises. We're going to do 15 repetitions for each exercise. And um, you can, on your own, do as many sets as you want, as many reps as you want. Um, always, and my big thing is always honoring your body. So if you feel any sharp shooting pain, any tingling, anything, especially in the knees, you want to back off, always honor your body. And then at the end, I want to bring you through a nice um, yoga-based stretch that I do with all my clients that I'm very, very um, adamant about that they all stay for that because as much as I love working out and I'm very <laughs> type A in nature, um, bringing the body down is just as important as working your body in a young type fashion, like masculine way. All right, so I hope you guys stick around for that. Um, so let's do it. All right, so our first exercise, what was it? It was, we're gonna do the sit and stand. And then we are going to move to the bird dog. And then we're gonna move to the push up. And we're gonna move to the lat pull down. Okay, so there's five exercises, sorry. Lat pull down. And then we're gonna move to the glute bridge. All right? You go at your own pace, um, and I'm just gonna do my thing, okay? And if after you guys have any questions or um, you wanna DM me, I'm always there for anybody. I love answering questions, so let me know, okay? So let's start with our sit and stand. We're gonna do 15 repetitions. If you, can, if you need to do less, do less, all right? But I'm moving all along, I'm gonna do 15. So I'm looking straight ahead. I'm finding my focal point. My belly is in. I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna stand and squeeze. Sit, that's two. Squeeze. Three. Four. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Shake it out. So we worked our legs. Okay, so now we're moving on to our chest, or actually our whole upper body. So this is working our tricep, bicep, whole upper body. Our focus is on our chest, though. So. Hun, can you change? You might want to go on the side so they can see me. Okay, one straight line. Hands are about a little wider than the chest. My belly is in. I'm squeezing my butt a little bit. There's no dipping down and I'm dipping in the lower back. Nice and strong. So I'm pushing myself against the wall. I'm pushing myself away. Two. Three. Belly in, you're breathing. Four. Fourteen, belly in. Fifteen, and shake it out. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm gonna do the uh, bird dog first. Then we're going to move to the glute bridge, and our last exercise will be the lat pull down. Okay, so we do a bird dog. Take a break if you need it. Take a child pose in between. I'm gonna do fifteen reps with really good form. All right. The problem is a lot of people will do a bird dog like this. You know, I do it very strict, slow, 
So you really get everything out of it that, that this exercise can do for you because, like I said, it is a primo exercise. Okay, so knees are about a distance apart. Hands are about the same width. And again, you adjust wherever it feels good for you. This is just what most trainers will say. But everybody is shaped different, so do what is comfortable for you. Belly in. Again, I'm not dipping down in that lower back. I'm doing a posterior tilt, pelvic tilt, bringing my belly in, pelvic up towards the ribs, lower ribs. Right arm and left leg. Right arm, left leg. Three. Four. side. If at any time, just take a break. This may be a lot for some. Okay. Left arm, right leg. Again, I'm not tilting over in the hips. Okay. My head is not hyperextended. My head is in line with the arm. Two. Three. Belly in. Four. Somebody's pulling your arm, somebody else is pulling your leg, nine, ten, lengthen, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, take a child's pose. And the reason, again, if you didn't listen to my Facebook message, I'm doing body weight. I have a whole gym here, but I'm going to just focus on trying to do things around the house because, like I said, it's taken a while for Amazon to deliver any fitness stuff and the marketplace, if you ever shop on there, they're really taking advantage of people and bumping up prices. So I hope to show many exercises just using your own body weight or some stuff around the house, okay? All right, so then we're gonna move to our glute bridge. We'll do 15 reps, and again, put that mind-body connection together. Put your hands there and try to squeeze your glutes. Dig deep, they're there, muscles there. Bring it up and squeeze. Two. Three. Ten more. Ten. Squeeze your butt. Nine. When you get to the top, squeeze. Eight. And then you may feel it more if you turn your toes out a little bit. Six. Four, take your time. Squeeze at the top. Three. Two. One. I instinctively always want to bring my knees towards my chest. Stretch out that lower back. Do little circles here. 
Again, I'm a stickler with form. I want to make sure you got it right before you start jumping around from exercise to exercise. Mind-body connection and doing it right to prevent any kind of injury to the body, okay? Like I said, I've been working out a long time and knock on wood, no injuries or I've always been very strict with form. Okay, so we are going to do our lap pull down. If you had a towel, that would be great. Bring your shoulder blades in toward your spine. Shoulder blades, shoulder blades. Just think about counteracting this. Open up in your heart. I say a lot of yoga stuff too, so I'm a yoga teacher. So we want to open up in the heart, okay? Just expand in that heart. All right. Squat with the uh, towel, whatever you got there, and bring it down. One, two, one. One, two, two. One, two, three. One, two, four. One, two, five. One, two, six. One, two, seven. One, two, eight. One, two, nine. One, two, ten. One, two, eleven. One, two, twelve. One, two, thirteen. One, two, fourteen. One, two, fifteen. Now, like I said, I'm working out a long, long time, but I felt that. I mean, you don't, who says you need weights <laughs> all the time? Body weight, mind-body connection. I really thought about squeezing. Again, you didn't see me in the front, but my belly was still in. Again, I didn't, I'm not doing any at workout per se today, but the whole workout, you should be thinking about bringing the belly in, working the muscle underneath whatever may be going on out there. Okay, so we're gonna work this whole round again, and that's it, and then we're gonna do a stretch. So I'm gonna start from going backwards. So we're gonna start with our lat pull first, and then we're gonna go backwards. So let's start, arms up overhead. We'll do a nice stretch at the end too, so it'll be, feel really good. We'll stretch out the whole back. Okay, belly in. You can have a slight bend in the knee if you wanna take pressure off the lower back. And bring it down and squeeze. One, two. One, two, two. One, two, three. One, two, four. One, two, five. One, two, six. One, two, seven. One, two, eight. One, two, nine. One, two, ten. Five more. One, two, five. One, two, four. One, two, three. Two. One, two, one. <sighs> okay, shake it out a little bit. All right, so we move to our glute bridge. Is anybody still with us, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Like I said, I don't know how to do this Facebook Live, but okay. So you may want to turn your toes out a little bit. If that feels, you feel like you feel it more in your glutes that way. So we just bring it up. One, two. Bring it up and squeeze. One, two. Three. Four. Five. Ten. Nine. Seven, six, five, 
two, one. Again, move your feet. If you don't feel it, you may have to adjust your feet. You may have to have them neutral, further apart, closer in, out. So play around with that. I think I'm going to do push up first before a bird dog because I'm actually feeling it a lot from that lat pull down. So I'd rather work my chest a little bit and then move to the posterior chain. So I'm going to do my push up. Place your hands on the wall, or the tree, or whatever you, wherever you are. I'm on my tippy toes. I'm in a straight line. I'm not dipping down in my lower back. I'm nice and strong in my middle here. Thinking about working my upper body. So I'm bringing my body in and push yourself away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bird dog for 15. Now you guys are all supposed to be beginners. So this is why I am not going into more advanced um, exercises. Of course, there's many, many different ways to do these kind of exercises, but I want you to get the basics down, okay? If you want to get in touch with me after, if you want to work with me or whatever, just write me a DM and we can make it happen. Okay. So you know the form, pointers. Let's start with, I'm gonna start on my left side. So left arm and right leg. Out. Two. Three. Belly in. Four. Extend. Five. Breathe. Six. Hit square to the ground. Seven. Eight, head in line with the arm. Nine. Ten, don't hold your breath. Five more. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Take a little rest. Let's finish on the other side. One. Two. Belly in. Three. Four. Five. Extend. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten. Let the energy flow out of your hand and your leg. Keep your hand open, eleven. Don't clench your hands up in a fist. Let your hands go. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Last exercise, sit and stand. Find your focal point in front of you. Make sure your knees are not going over your toes. Again, everybody shake differently. You can do this hip distance apart, a little further, turn your feet out, make them neutral. As long as your form looks good, 
I'm good with that. Belly in. Okay. Sit and squeeze your butt. Four, three, two, one. Good job. High five. Now, listen, we're supposed to be focusing on beginners. If you guys are more advanced and this is nothing for you, just keep going around. Keep doing the circuit. I'm sure you will feel it. Um, but I'm going to go into a stretch, and this is the basic stuff that I do with every client. I make sure they stay, and they all love it. So it, bring your, it will bring your body down. So I hope you will stay and do the stretch with me, okay? So I like to start in a child's pose, and you want to stay on in each stretch for the minimum amount of time, about 30 seconds. So I'm actually going to get my clock so I don't go over it. So I can get you guys done for the day. So you, you know what? If nothing else, if nothing else, you moved your body today, which is a really great thing. And bonus points if you got to do this outside, so you get the sun's energy. I talk about energy a lot. Um, maybe if I keep doing this, if I get some feedback from you guys, and I keep doing this, you're going to hear a lot of um, not just about working out and food. I talk about the whole encompassing everything that's important for total health and wellness. And I'm really adamant about good water, good sleep, good social, you know, contact with people that are good for your soul, um, good energy food, um, and getting outside, walking, just feeling your feet into the ground, to the earth. So let's get into the stretch. And I have, I have a couple blocks. Um, you don't need blocks or anything, but um, I'm gonna use them for the for one of the stretches I'm doing. Um, you can use uh, same size books, heavy books, or actually nothing at all if you don't if you don't have what I have here. Okay, so we're gonna start in child pose. I have my big toes together, my knees apart. I'm just dipping my body down in between my legs. And we're gonna stay for about 30 seconds. I'm going to extend my arms without trying to move my buttocks off of my heels. So I wanna feel that stretch in the upper body. Rest your head on the ground. And just bring your whole nervous system down. This feels bad for your knees. Stick something in between your, your knees and your ankles, like a blanket or something. You can also bring your knees in close together. Move your body to the right while trying to keep your buttocks on the heel. And move your arms to the right so you feel a lateral stretch on the left side of your body. Slow down your breath. Make sure you're breathing. 30 seconds. Give yourself the time to stretch after you work out, no matter what kind of workout you do. I've seen too many people just hurry up with the workout and finish and leave your gym or whatever, but like I said, it is as important 
as your workout. So go to the other side and stretch the right lateral side of your body, keeping your butt as close to the heel as you can. And breathe. your body up. We're going to go into a runner's lunge. Well, I like to put my blocks on either side and put my left leg forward, my right leg back. Again, my knee is not going over my toe. You can bring the back leg in a little bit. Um, if you have some issues with the knee, put a blanket underneath your knee or underneath your shin to let your knee float. And I like to have my hands on either side of my leg and kind of just sink down. So I'm stretching, you may feel this in the inner thigh in the front and in the back leg, in the hip flexor and the quad in the back. And I like to think about opening up my heart again, but you can let your body sink if you want to. And if you want to put your hands on your leg, that's fine too, but just don't put pressure on the knee. Put your hands above the knee. And listen, if you have the flexibility, you put your hands on the uh, mat, but I'm not working. I'm just coming down. I'm going to make it a little bit easier for myself. Wiggle yourself out of that side, bring your right leg forward. Again, don't let that knee go over your toe. Get length in the middle of your body or some space. Now, if you have some issues in the hip here and you may want to maneuver your foot to the right side of your mat, it may alleviate some of that pinching in the hip. Breathe. Notice if you have any tension in your body or anything, any rigidness in your shoulders or your jaw, let it go. I do some cat and cows just to, um, to stretch out the spine. You're going to inhale, bring your tailbone up and your head up, sink in that lower back. And then you're going to exhale, I want you to bring the belly in towards your spine, exaggerate the rounding of the spine, head down. And we'll do that a few times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Make your way to your back. Could I have my towel, please? So use your towel now, whatever you used for your lap pull down. We're just gonna do a hamstring stretch. Could you make sure they could see me on? Okay. Okay. Leave the, the left leg bent, foot flat on the ground. Wrap your towel around the middle of your foot and pull. You feel a stretch in the back of the leg hamstring here, maybe the calf. Don't go crazy with this. Don't overstretch. Just need a slight bend in the knee. 
Try to get the shoulders as close to the ground as you can. So if you extend that left leg, you'll feel it a little bit more in the back of the right leg. You can flex that left foot. You want to do that. Once you get to where you are fully, where you're going to be with your stretch, try to, try to stay there for the 30 seconds. Hold the towel or whatever you have in your right hand and bring your leg out to the right without lifting that left hip. So you may not go down that far. I'm just going to go down a little bit. I don't want to lift my left hip. You might be able to go all the way down. Feel the stretch in the inner thigh, hip flexor. Try to keep both hips grounded to the earth. You may want to do a T, bring that left arm out into a T. You might want to look at that left hand. And breathe. Make sure you are not holding your breath. Let the breath flow. Bring that leg in, release, and go to the other side. One leg may be tighter than the other. I hurt my hamstring a while back, a long time ago. It was a little tighter on my left side. So you want to have a slight bend in that left leg. You can extend the right leg or just leave the leg bent. A little less intense with the leg bent than straight. Hold it to your full extension, wherever that stretch may be, to the back of the leg. You may feel it from all the way in your glute, all the way up in your calf. Close your eyes. Hold on to the strap or whatever it is, your towel or whatever you're using with your left hand. Bring your leg out to the left without lifting up in the hip. So bring both hips down into the earth. You may even want to take your right hand and kind of push that right hip into the earth. Feel the opening in the inner thigh, groin area. You may want to make a T with your arm. Look over at your right hand if you'd like to do that. And breathe. Rush through the stretches. Be patient with yourself. Patience is the key. It'll pay off, believe me, as we get older, for sure. Bring it in. Bring your knees into your chest. Do little circles. Massage out that lower back. Seven times one way. Three, four, five. Six, seven, other way, seven, six, five. You have one body. Take care of it. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, we'll do a spinal twist on the floor. We're going to extend the left leg. Bring that right foot above your knee. Hold on to your right knee with your left hand and just bring that knee as close to the floor as you can get it. Pushing down with your left hand. Now, you can make a T with your upper body. Open up in the heart and chest. Look up at the ceiling or you can look over towards the leg that's bent. 
All right, look over at the hand, the right hand. A little bit more of a twist in the neck. Again, notice if you're holding your breath. Let the tension melt into the earth. Thank you. Unravel. Do a quick squeeze. Extend the right leg. Left foot above that right leg. Drape that right knee over. Hold with your right hand. You can make a T. Look over at your left hand and breathe. Again, when I do stretches with clients, or I do a little bit of variation of twisting and what have you, but I found that this sequence is really nice to stretch out the whole body. You can do it in about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, which is not a lot of time compared to being healthy and being able to move your body and being flexible. So give yourself the gift of doing stretching and working out and taking care of yourself. Unravel. I like to do something called the imaginary wrap. So we stretch out your, our legs. And we bring our arms up overhead. And you imagine that you are on a rack, imaginary rack. Somebody's pulling your hands. Somebody else is pulling your legs. And we were separating our vertebrae. And they're going, ah, oh, it feels so good because they've been condensed all day. Even when we're working out, we're condensing our spine. So this feels really good. Just stretch out, elongate. I'm five feet tall, but I feel 10 feet tall in this stretch. Feels really good. And then roll over, push yourself up. And I thank you all for coming and for joining me on this, my first time doing this. Again, any questions or anything you were confused about or anything you may want to see in the future with me, just DM me, write me. Um, again, if anybody wants to work with me, um, you don't have to worry, wait for... Um, this whole thing to be over, the quarantine, you can work with me via um, Zoom. I'm more than happy to do that. So just get in touch with me. Um, I'm very honored that you all came. So thank you very much. Have a great day or evening. Thank you.